G'day Blenderheads and welcome to the Apocalypse. There's a lot of stuff that goes into creating a scene like this. There's buildings, rubble, vehicles, the trees, grass, vines, even the rocks and potholes in the road. Creating a scene like this from scratch could be weeks, maybe even months worth of work. Now, if you're the kind of person that likes to create everything yourself and you're perfectly happy to spend a month or two on this sort of a project, then hey, that's awesome. Like seriously, this is art. If that's what makes you happy, then go nuts. Now, for me personally, I don't want to create two or three of these shots every year. I want to be able to create 10 or 20 or maybe even an entire short film. Now, to create something like this in a couple of days, we're going to need to tap into some asset packs. In my case, I've recently got my hands on a copy of Botanic, Traffic and Materialic, all from the company Polygonic. There's links to all of those in the description below if anybody is interested in checking them out. However, I realise not all of you have disposable income to purchase these kind of add-ons, so if you're not at a point where you can throw money at these, don't worry, I've made sure that there are some links in the description below to some free assets you can use instead. Now, these free assets are probably not as high quality and there's probably a little bit more manual setup involved with them, but I mean, hey, shut up, they're free. The first thing you want to do when building a scene like this is decide on your composition. Choosing a composition early means you'll already know where you want your camera, which means you know exactly what you need to build and where to put everything. For collecting references, I use Pure Ref which is an awesome reference collecting tool with the added bonus of it being completely free. With a rough composition decided upon, it's time to start blocking out my scene. I quickly set up a camera roughly where I want it to be, low to the road to show off all the rubble details and tilted slightly upwards again, just to show off the size of the city in the background. I also turn on the passa part pa pa passe pa pass part two. I turn the passe two all the way up to one. This prevents me from seeing things outside of my camera view, which I found can distract me from getting that perfect composition. Next, I use the traffic add-on to add my main focal point to the scene, the overturned bus. With the bus in the scene, I quickly start blocking out some other major pieces, such as the sidewalks and adding a road texture. I open up a new blender scene with some buildings from Kitbash 3D. All of these structures are from their Warzone pack and will work perfectly for this scene, as they're all kind of dilapidated and half turned to rubble. To start with, I choose this building with all of the beams showing. I want this one somewhere near the front of my shot as it has a lot of detail and really emphasises the destroyed nature of the city. I copy another building from the Kitbash scene, this one is basically all just rubble. I can use this to add random junk to parts of the scene and really make things generally look like a mess. With some random destruction in my scene, I start bringing in the big guns in the background. I place these a long way back to help emphasise the size of the city and also to show off little bits of destruction on them. From this angle you'll only ever see one side of the building, so duplicating them and rotating them around makes them look like a completely new building. Don't forget to instance these buildings when you do this, the shortcut is Alt-D. Instances will really help reduce how much memory Blender uses and makes your scenes lighter and renders faster. I really love this particular building with half of its side blown out. I use this to kind of cut a shape around the bus, which again will hopefully draw the viewer's eye in this direction. With a lot of my major shapes in place, I want to start playing with lighting next. A lot of people leave lighting until the end, but lighting plays such a big part in your composition, so even if you leave the final light tweaks to the end, it's a good idea to have something set up early. Materialic comes with a bunch of HDRIs as well as materials, and it makes it really easy to swap between them to test your lighting quickly. HDRIs are awesome for quickly lighting a scene, but oftentimes they don't quite give you the level of control you want. In my case, I reduce the intensity of the HDRI just so it provides a little bit of ambient light, and then bring in a sun lamp to provide the deep shadows that I want. I'm constantly thinking about my overall composition, and I know I need to keep emphasising this bus area. So I throw in a light block to cast some shadows in front of the bus, but leave the bus itself well lit. This contrast will hopefully help draw the viewer's eye where I want it. I also add a little bit of an orange tone to my sun to give the impression that it's either early morning or late afternoon. I know that eventually I'll be adding in the robot and turning this into a little bit of a scary scene, and these times of day are generally considered a little bit more spooky. Another big part of my lighting setup is going to be this fog and the sunbeams coming in from the side. So while I'm working on the lighting, now is a good time to bring this in. 
I create a giant cube to cover most of my scene, remembering to change its viewport display from textured to bounds so that you can actually see through it while working. I add a principled volume shader and turn it into fog. I plug a noise texture into the density slot to add a little bit of variation in the fog. I found that adding a little bit of distortion to the noise texture can kind of give you this wispy fog which is really nice. I found that by default the fog density is always really really thick so I like to add a math node in between my noise texture and the volume shader and then set it to multiply and choose a fairly low number. This dramatically lowers the fog density. City streets are always really busy, even the half destroyed ones. So once again I turn to the traffic add-on and start adding random street elements to the scene. This stuff is why I really love these kind of add-ons. Like, there's just not a lot of challenge in making a street sign. I mean, it's essentially a cylinder with a circle stuck on top of it. But modeling and texturing one myself could take half an hour or so. So I'm perfectly happy to pay another artist to build these kind of scene filler assets and let me get back to crafting my scene. This street light here is looking a little too perfect, so I jump into edit mode and rotate a few things out of place. This just makes it look like everything is held together with duct tape and a prayer. The gutters here come from Quixel Bridge. They're battered and crumbling and add that nice little bit of extra detail to my streets. I join a few different pieces together and then use an array modifier to instance them down the street. I also tweak their colour ever so slightly just to fit better by using a hue and saturation node. I also grab a couple of these pothole assets from Quixel. You can barely see these things in the final image but it's just another level of detail that adds a little bit of grit and grime to the city. Speaking of grime, this road is looking far too clean, so I add a dirt material using Materialic and then blend between the road material and the dirt material using a noise texture. Next up is to start making it look like nature is trying to take back this city. To do this we're going to need trees, plants, grass and weeds. I start by duplicating the road. I'll edit this to use it as an emitter to scatter grass particles around the scene. I add a few extra subdivisions to make it easier to vertex paint later. Botanic comes with a few presets you can use to scatter, but in my case I want to add a little bit more fine tune control, so I create a custom particle system and manually choose the assets myself. Once I've picked a couple of grass and weed assets, I jump into the vertex paint modes to manually paint where I want them to appear. I deliberately choose areas where soil would build up and allow plants to grow, such as out of the rubble or near the edges of the bus. Next I add a whole bunch of vines draping over the bus. Botanic is amazingly fast here as I can simply instance my current vine asset and then hit randomize variant and the asset automatically chooses a different vine from its large collection. This helps add variation and prevents repeating patterns. With the bus covered I turn to the city itself. I start covering the close up buildings with the same vines, lining them up to the window sills and cracks to make it look like the vines are creeping into every nook and cranny. Again, don't forget to use Alt-D to instance these objects and save memory. Grass and weeds are a good start, but I also want to add some rocks. Firstly, that just adds a bit more randomness to the scene, but it also makes it look like the road itself is crumbling and breaking up. As with the grass, I use some vertex painting to distribute the rocks where I want them. These rocks are surprisingly detailed and they do begin to slow my scene down quite a bit. So to compensate, I throw a decimate modifier on each of the rocks and bring down their polygon count. Since these rocks won't be seen close up, I can afford to lose a little bit of detail here. To finish up my foreground foliage, I add a couple of these big trees. Most city streets have some trees planted, but I deliberately make these extra large to give the impression that they haven't been trimmed for quite some time. The buildings in the background are really big and they take forever to place vines manually, so I try for something a little bit more clever. I create some giant planes to surround my buildings. I then add a few edge loops and delete any areas that don't line up nicely with the side of the building. I'm then able to use botanic scattering tools to create scattered vine leaves across these faces, adding a lot of small detail without all of the manual work. Remember if your scene starts to slow down, Blender has a few built in tools to get your viewport back on track. Changing an object's viewport display to bounds can make a huge difference to performance. And by selecting a whole bunch of objects at once and holding down ALT when you change the display type, you can change all of them at once. Another thing that's looking far too clean are these cars in the background. Although they're distant assets, they still need some dirt and rusts to make them look older. 
Again, using Materialic, I grab a dirt and rusted metal material and blend them together with the original car paint. I also increase the amount of roughness in the car paint to make it just look a little less shiny. As an added bonus, I delete a bunch of faces in the windows and then use the Randomize Transform tool to make it look like the glass has been shattered. I use some tree alphas that I had sitting around from projects past to replace my light blocker and create this dappled light effect. Adding these details gives the impression that there's more stuff just outside of the camera view and it makes your world feel much bigger than it actually is. I want to add a little bit of animation to my scene, so I replace the trees with an animated version from Botanic. This is one of my favourite features from Botanic. Rigging and creating dynamic animation for a tree would take quite a bit of time to set up, and being able to add this level of animation with a couple of clicks is just amazing. I also want to add a little bit of movement to my grass assets. To achieve this, I add a simple shape key to each of my grass assets. Turning these shape keys on and off adds just a little bit of movement, just enough to fool the eye, and having them randomly scattered means that none of the animations quite look the same, giving the impression of randomness in the wind. After a few more colour tweaks to the plants and trees, I'm now ready to add the hero asset to my scene, the robot. As with everything in this scene, I'm trying to do it as fast as I can and making a robot from scratch would be days if not weeks worth of work. And finding a good robot model out there was a challenge. So I'd like to give a big thank you to ADR Parkinson on CG Trader for not only making this wicked robot available for free, but specifically for rigging it with Rigify, which now means it's really easy to add some motion capture to this bad boy. I jump on over to Mixamo and grab one of their free gymnastic jumping animations. Using the Auto Rig Pro add-on, I quickly retarget the motion capture animation to the robot rig. Then, using Animation Layers add-on, I add a few little tweaks, like making him jump significantly higher. Remember, you can use the NLA editor instead of Animation Layers, but I find the NLA editor very unintuitive, and I prefer Animation Layers. Once I add the robot to the scene and add a little bit of camera movement, I'm ready to render. With all of these assets plus fog, my render times are pretty big. Not too bad if you were just going to render a single frame, but for these 400 frames or so, 15 minutes per frame is a little too long to tie my computer up for. For larger projects like this, I'd usually make use of a render farm like Sheepit, but both my file size and the render times are pretty big, and I'm not certain Sheepit could have handled it. So instead, I elect to try out the new Cycles X for the first time. And boy was that an eye-opener! My render times immediately fell from 15 minutes to around 5 minutes, a 3 times increase in render speed. Now we're talking. I did have some issues with the volumetrics, for some reason around about 50 frames had this weird glitch in them that I wasn't able to figure out, so I did have to go back to regular cycles for those 50 frames. But that was the only issue I had. I render out an ambient occlusion and a volumetric pass to combine with my main render. I choose to do my compositing in After Effects, but there's nothing I do here that couldn't be done in Blender. I use the volumetric pass and a simple mask to make the sunbeams pointing towards the bus and the robot stronger. And the ambient occlusion pass adds a little bit of darkness details to a few areas. Last but not least, I go to freesounds.org and grab a few sound effects, such as wind, background birds chirping, and all these strange sci-fi robot noises. If you want to see more of these types of tutorials, throw a like on the video to let me know, and remember that any of the add-ons or assets that we've discussed here will have links in the description below. And one last time, here's that final render.